Hi, this is John Cushell with the Through the Fire Training Organization here at my gym in Tyler, Texas, The Metal Shop. Today we're going to be discussing an often misunderstood topic, that of trapping. Very often uh, people outside of the Jeet Kune Do world and even sometimes those inside the Jeet Kune Do world or other arts that use trapping, Wing Chun, some of the Filipino systems, they're misunderstood because people assume that we are looking for a trap. Uh, the fact of the matter is there's a, a disconnect in the understanding between trapping as a range in a fight or a conflict and trapping as a set of techniques. Yes, we use techniques within the range, however our primary focus in this case is not to seek after a compound trap. Our primary focus is to hit the man. Uh, when you come into an attack, if you meet a barrier, that is the only time that you would use trapping and as you're going to see here sometimes you don't even need to use those techniques at all. We do use, uh, as I said, we do use trapping techniques to bring out attributes and to give you a familiarity with the body and reacting in that range. Many of those things you can see in the energy drills or the sensitivity drills that we use. Uh, but we also do some of those to give, um, to keep a connection to the historical roots of Jeet Kune Do through uh, Siko and Bruce Lee and also Sifu Dan and Asano. And I learned the majority of my trapping material through Sifu Rick Fay as well as uh, Sifu Paul Vunak. Um, also learned some very interesting things from uh, Sifu Michael Gruner over in, in Munich, Germany. But the key here to remember is that whenever you get into a conflict, if you crash and there's, a, there's that moment in time before you get a full clinch, before someone gets a clinch on you, as you're crashing, if you can't hit the man and you end up hitting a barrier, your arms get stopped somehow. Instead of stopping and expanding again and then trying to re-engage, you're just going to go right through it and you're going to react like water. And oftentimes I say to my students, it's, it's very much like standing on the edge of a beach. If you step down into the water, when that wave comes crashing in and your legs meet that resistance, uh, your, hand, your legs stop that wave in the place that your legs are. Does the wave stop for 30 miles up and down the beach? Of course not. It just effortlessly goes right around you as though you're not there. And that is the, go the goal of going through trapping range. And most often times we're trying to get neck control of the clinch ourselves so we can finish this thing off quickly. So what we're going to be showing you today is five ways that I teach to deal with a barrier. Some of them come from Wing Chun, some from other arts, and we'll get into that as we go. Uh, the first way you can deal with a barrier is to push it or smash it down, just to blast right through it quite honestly, or put easier, just go right through it. The second way you can deal with a barrier is to pull it or jerk it away and move it out of the way in that fashion. This, the third way you can do it is to go around it, uh, and we'll look at jow sawing motions. The fourth way is just to destroy it, attack it, attack the barrier in the, in the manner of the Filipino defang the snake sort of methodology. And the fifth way is just to ignore it completely and attack a different line. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about trapping. It's a big, it's a big uh, concept. There's a lot of things that we could talk about. Um, a lot of them are probably a little bit too complicated to get into on video because again, it's a feeling thing. You need to feel it to be able to understand how to respond correctly. But I'd just like to talk about two specific things again, that is, uh, the range as opposed to techniques, trapping range, and then what exactly is trapping? Again, trapping is to facilitate hitting of your opponent. You're not going to trap him for trapping's sake. You're actually trying to hit him. Something got in your way, there was a barrier. Now how do you deal with that? Do you just totally disengage or do you go through that and around it and etc. So I'd like to give you just five quick things that you can think about in trapping that hopefully will open up a whole new world of possibilities and create for you a different way to look at trapping when you get into this environment. Okay, the, the key principle I want you to understand here is there's always more places to hit then there are ways to stop you from hitting. What I mean by that is, if you truly learn to flow like water, as Bruce Lee said, water can flow or it can crash, be water, my friend, and you can go YouTube that great speech of his and you'll learn, all, you can hear what he says there. But the point is, if you learn to just continually move through your opponent and go right around through or above below his defense, he's not going to be able to stop you if you can flow. If you stop and there's hesitation, he's going to be able to keep up with you and counter you and then put you on the defensive. And so you need to learn how to flow. So from this range, trapping would only happen again if I go to hit Daniel and there's a hand or something gets in the way. Maybe he puts his hands up and he blocks. Maybe he's falling down and his hands are up. Maybe he pushes them into my face, but there's some kind of a barrier here. And I would suggest to you there's five different ways you can deal with this barrier. The first way 
is, if our hands are caught in this manner, let's say, I can smash this out of the way. I can push it out of the way. So instead of, if my hand hits here, instead of disengaging and trying to come back in again, I'm already there. I might as well just remove the barrier and hit him anyway. Okay, so as long as there's something to smash, I can smash it and go just right through him. Sometimes he's too strong or I don't feel right or I get through the first barrier and there's a second barrier. Now it's kind of hard because I'm across the center line to smash it and go through that again. But sometimes what I can do is pull it and go around him and hit him this way. Sometimes if this hand is too strong and I come in, then I'm just going to pull it and hit him on this side here. So I can smash the barrier, I can pull the barrier. Okay, sometimes <clears throat> that barrier is strong again, what I might do is just go around it. And they call this a jow saw or a small disengagement. I can just move my hand whoop, and come right around it like this. Sometimes they'll go from here and come to the groin. So I can go small disengagement here or I can go large disengagement and make it a bigger motion. So I'm not worrying so much about the barrier, I'm hitting the man because that's the whole goal of this thing. The other thing I can do is destroy the barrier. If the barrier is here, sometimes I can just come in here and go back into a little collie orientation and destroy his arm. Sometimes I can pull it here and attack down onto the muscle. Sometimes I can push it here and attack it on the inside here. Okay, so I'm just attacking the thing that's blocking me. The fifth concept is we can just disregard this completely. I can just hit a different line. So if I'm here, the open line is to his groin or thigh. So if he has got his mind here, maybe I just disregard completely and go on the low line and attack him here. Then I don't even need to worry about the barrier. Again, the key concept here is we want to hit the man. We're not worried about chasing down a bunch of traps. We're worried about hitting him. If something gets in my way, I'll deal with it appropriately, but the appropriate way to deal with it is by hitting him. So hopefully from those examples, you'll be able to understand better what I was trying to explain earlier, that trapping is a range more than it is a set of techniques. It's very important that you have a certain attitude when you actually get into a clash and you come into this trapping range. You don't have time to sit and think. You don't have time to judge. You need to react creatively and appropriately instantaneously depending on what kind of a barrier you you get and that is again one of the reasons why we do all the sensitivity drills we spend so much time in those because this is like our backyard when you crash we want to be able to like that wave just without thought go around any barriers and still get to the neck or the head or whatever we're trying to achieve for control in this situation so look at those five different methods that we just talked about to be able to push the barrier or smash it out of the way, to pull it or jerk it down and out of the way, to go around the barrier on the same line, to destroy the barrier where it sits, or just disregard it and attack on a different level or a different quadrant of the body. And when you understand these things and you start to put in the proper intent and the proper attitude at this range, you'll be able to very quickly destroy the defense of your opponent. One thing to remember, when you're in trapping range, you're also vulnerable. If you're not being the puppet master, you're in danger. And that's why in our organization, Through the Fire, we talk about going through that area where you can get hurt. We don't want to play fair in this case. We do not want to be in a position where it's a 50-50 chance. I want to be able to go through that fire and just quench it and be able to get to the neck, the head position, and stop the aggressor in his tracks. Thank you.